Amen. Glorious God. Feel free to sit or stand, whichever you like, but please be a part of this. Oh my goodness, I've dropped my... Thank you so much, William. Thank you. God is so, so good. And we have testimony after testimony in this place, week after week, day after day. And and he, he just never stops. His goodness never ends. He's, he's unfailing. He's so, so faithful. And we've got, we've got a few praise, specific praise reports here. Genesis here is saying, this is, I'm thankful for everything I have in my life. All the people, may God bless them all. And one more, thank you for what I have. Isn't that, that good? We can all we can all agree and get, get in agreement with that. Hallelujah! Thank you, thank you, Lord. Now, another praise report. Here we go. Lydia, good morning from Texas. If you haven't seen this. Lydia is praising the Lord that she's made it safely over to get a few weeks with her precious family and friends in Dallas and to meet up with various people who have been financially and prayerfully supporting her chaplaincy work in the schools here and the youth outreach that she's been here for seven years. Um, so we are going to pray because we're just thankful for that, that she's over there and we're going to pray and ask for her upcoming application for indefinite leave to remain, which will allow Lydia to stay and work in the UK. And we all want her to stay and work in the UK because her work is so valuable. She's such a, such a blessing. Um, so she can finally apply for this from the end of April. It's expensive as well, so we're just going to be praying fi for financial um, help there and that um, that these people who have been supporting her maybe maybe can continue to do that, and that God will just won't limit God, but He can provide the way that He wants to provide. And also, just to pray for Jack when he comes over next week for his safe travels. Amen. Now, um, can we please also pray for acceptance of? differences and appreciation of similarities between each other with love. Okay, so there's a lot of division and stuff like that in the political arena just now and just everything. There's a lot of div dis divisiveness and I think that's a great prayer, uh, Victoria, because there's just, there's just so much disruption and dis dis real disunity. So let's just pray for unity amongst, amongst people, Lord. So um, when we lift up these prayers to the Lord, I'm fumbling my words today, sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, also, I'm going to read out this prayer request from Candy as well for her mother. She, she would like us to stand with her in prayer as we there believe for the complete recovery of Candy's mum in India. She's going to be traveling over to India soon, as soon as she gets a visa, and... We just want to praise God that he's already lined up hearts to help Kandu. She's got a friend who's told her that God's already spoken to her to help her, to make, to, to give her anything that she needs for her planned trip to Nepal. And Kandu is just praising God because she's just overwhelmed by his love and goodness and wants to thank him for his amazing provision to be able to take a detour of their trip before they go to Nepal. And she's given me this psalm. 27 verse 13 I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living Amen, God is so good Now there was one more prayer request and that's for Liz who has actually broken her leg so she's asking for healing and strength as she manages for small holding and animals. So we're going to pray for healing. We're going to pray, pray for peace of mind and strength for her Lord as she, as she just, um, as she recovers from this broken leg. 
And also Victor is asking for a prayer for a new job, um, which is, he, he's been here for three months from India and he's looking for a job. So we just thank you God for that. So let's just, let's just all maybe reach out your hands just to sh show your involvement and let's lift these people in our minds. You know these people, these are our Christian brothers and sisters as, as um, Morag said, we will, they will know you by your love for one another. Let's just have love for these brothers and sisters and just as we just lift them up in prayer. Holy Spirit, thank you that you give us the right words. Thank you for your power that flows in and through us. We lift up Candu's mum to you, Lord. Lord, our healer. And we speak a complete restoration over her body from the very top of her head to the soles of her feet. We thank you for completeness, Lord. We thank you for a full work of healing in her body. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that you're making a way for Kandu to be able to get over and visit her. Thank you, Lord, that as she comes, Lord, that she'll be greeted with an open-armed hug from her mum because she'll be up and ready to greet her in Jesus' name. Lord, and I thank you for Victor. I thank you for a job. I thank that you have a place for him, Lord, that you have a place for him to work here in Dumfries. And I just thank you for opening that door for Victor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I lift up Liz. Lord, I thank you that you meet her exactly where she is. I thank you, Lord, for healing for her, her uh, body, Lord. I thank you for that broken leg to be knit together and healed, Lord, and that you would give her the strength that she needs in every aspect, in every area of her life, that you would fill her with your strength, that you would fill her with your spirit, that you would fill her with wisdom and revelation, Lord, as she manages the the small holding lord i just thank you that you give her everything that she needs for that lord and everything that she needs for abundant life and health with you and wholeness with you in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord and we just thank you for lydia god she is such a blessing here lord what would we do without her here lord i don't know i just thank you lord for making the straight path for her Lord, for all provision for her, Lord, that she needs. I thank you, Lord, that you're so faithful and that you will provide everything that she needs for her finances and for this visa, for, for everything that she needs, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, just to, that you pour on your blessings over her, Lord. She's a blessed, she's blessed to be a blessing, Lord. And I just thank you that she's a, she's a faithful person to pour out those blessings on. I thank you, Lord, just that you pour them out and Lord, that she'll have a great time and benefit and, uh, and, uh, over in Dallas, Lord, and that you would give Jack safe travels and that together, Lord, they'll just have an amazing experience over there and that they'll be able to be a blessing right where they are over there as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, we are going to go on to communion. And I have looked out, I have a passage on my heart to just share. Jesus said, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. This is in John 15. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. That's a promise. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch can, cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me 
and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples and this brings great glory to my Father. Now, we are all part of the vine, right? As, we've, we've, um, w- as we remain in him, we are nourished by him. We are nourished by God. We are nourished by his goodness and we are tended by, the, by him. We're tended, our lives are tended by the gardener. Now, we don't want to, we want to remain in him. And this communion, I believe, is just like receiving that, that nourishment from him, saying, I am in you. I thank you that your body was broken for me. Your blood was poured out for me. I am nothing without you and without this sustenance. Now, as I just invite you to come up, if, if, um, if you have a relationship with Jesus, you know him, and you, are, you're in, you know you're in that vine, then I just invite you to come up and take part in the communion. If you're feeling like, you know, my life hasn't been right, uh, I'm not standing in right standing with him, repent, turn away and come up and receive the nourishment. Just do it now. If you're not in right standing with him, just sort that out in your heart and come up and receive because his arms are open his the nourishment is available now just as it's part of a bottle and part of a of a loaf Lord, we're all part of one and we're all receiving the same nourishment the same goodness from god and the same just precious love that he just pours on us so i'm just going to invite you all to come up and if you don't know jesus as your lord and savior please come and speak to one of us We're available to just come and just give your heart to him and just come and receive because it's the best thing that you can ever do. Amen. So I'm just going to, we've got got people here to serve you and I'm just going to leave you over to the host team and just thank you, Lord, for this time together and thank you for this nourishment. Thank you that we're part of the vine. Thank you that as we remain in you, you remain in us. And Lord, we want to be vessels of your love. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus that you're real thank you Jesus that you love us <coughs> that you sacrifice yourself you died on the cross for us because you want us to be saved you took up our sin and our shame so that we could have eternal life thank you Jesus hallelujah you're awesome you're wonderful and you're magnificent and you created all things also, you still love every single one of us, even though we're nobodies. You care for every single one of us, and you love us. Thank you, Jesus, for your unconditional, unending love that we can't even comprehend. Thank you. Thank you. We love you, and we honor you. Amen. 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 Church, let's just stay in this moment of worship and thanksgiving to God in this um um, in a moment, the host team will be passing out baskets for our offering and giving. And I just want to encourage us today to um, remember um, who is, not, not to focus on the blessing, but to fo focus on the blesser. Is that the right word? But, you know, we are blessed because God blessed us. And we can bless because God blesses first. The same way we can love other people, we can be generous because God was generous and loving to us first. So, yeah, um, just to encourage us that, yeah, um, you know, we can bless the church, give um, our, with our finances because it's our way. I, can, I believe that it's a, one of the ways that we have. We have worship, we have prayer, we have singing, all these things. But I believe that giving our, with our finances is also a way of thanking Jesus for all he has done for us and his kindness and his goodness. So, yeah. And basket should be coming around. And if you don't have um, money to put in the basket, don't worry. The QR code is just on the screens there. You can just use your phone and do it via online bank transfers. Um, and while the basket's going around, I'd just like to pray for us all. Jesus, thank you so much that um, um, you love us and you bless us. You bless our socks off. And thank you that we can... Um, give as a way to say thank you to all the things that you've done for us, not just with our lives, but with also our finances. 
um, we pray, Lord, with this offering that's being um, given, Lord, that you would just anoint this and that it would go to great use, that it would be able to serve you better and we'd be able to serve the community with it better, Lord. And those who have given, we pray that you would just bless those people, Lord, and those also who have not given, Lord, we pray that you'll bless them as well, Lord, and just teach us to be more generous, loving, and kind. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, are there children in the house? I can't hear you. Are there children in the house? Yes. Are you looking forward to kids church? Yes. So kids and babies, if you just follow the wonderful, wonderful volunteers wearing the bright, sunshiny yellow. And yes, have a great time at kids church and little wonders. Bless you. Great, isn't it? Hello? Here we go. So good to have the kids in the house. Amen? Amen. Well, if you're just, if you're just finished up here giving, that's great. I'm just going to share a few things that are going on in the life of the church. There's a lot going on. So uh, if you're not plugged into something in the church, there's an opportunity for you to get plugged in with prayer times, Bible study groups, um, teams serving, all sorts of things. And uh, so we'd love to, to help you, have you be a part of that. Um, you know, life outside of the Sunday morning. There's lots going on. So let me just run through a list of few things for you. Um, first of all, I mentioned prayer. So tonight at um, 6 until 7 o'clock uh, is prayer meeting. And I really want to encourage you to come if you can make it. Um, it's, you can bring your kids as well. That's absolutely fine. Sometimes people do that. You, can, you raise them up in, in prayer. That's really, really good. Um, but we pray for the church. We pray for Dumfries. And we pray for the nation and uh, those are some of the main themes that we, we pray about. And uh, how many of you know that our nation needs prayer? Amen? Yeah, yeah there's a lot going on that uh, seems crazy. So let's just lift these things up. Let's join together. Jesus, um, the Bible tells us that if, if two or more are gathered in my name, that he's there with us. And if we ask anything of him as well, that we'll, he'll give it to us. So prayer is powerful. And it's partnering, partnering with God and bringing his kingdom into the earth. Amen? So it'd be great if, you, if you've never been before, don't worry. If you've never prayed in public before, you don't have to pray out loud. You can pray to yourself and just say amen when someone else prays. So even if you're new to praying, it's a great opportunity to come and see what it's all about. Uh, we've got youth again this Friday. And uh, are we, do we know where we're meeting this week? In here. So if you're a young person, uh, if you're in high school, and then, then, and then we invite you to come along or invite your friends, challenge you to bring your friends uh, as well. And if you want to know more about that, see Debbie. We've got um, life groups that meet throughout the weeks, uh, the, the week, and we've got a foundation course, which is just winding up. If, if you're interested in joining a foundation course where we teach you some of the foundational things of our faith, then we will be starting another one uh, next quarter of the year. So just hang, hang on to that thought. And if you want to know more about the Bible, more about who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, some of these basic foundational things, we'd love to have you come on to the course. Um, also, if you're in a foundations course, if you've been in the last foundation course, we want to really encourage you to get into life groups. Life groups are almost like mini church. You meet together in someone's home. You usually have a cup of tea or some kind of fellowship time. You pray together, we study the word together, and pray for each other. It's pretty much what we do on a Sunday morning. Sometimes churches, will, I mean, sometimes life groups will even do worship. It's, each one's a slightly, slightly different one. So we've got a few life groups going. We're going to hopefully expand that as the year goes on. Um, because if everybody was in a life group right now, we wouldn't have enough life groups. Um, so we need more. So we'll really pray really in for new leaders as well and uh, opportunities for starting new life groups. We've got the um, Forget New Not Ministry, which... Uh, I was on last week. Um, we've got, um, where are we at here? I've just missed it. Sorry about this. Just had it here a second ago. Mobile phones are great, but they're not as good as a piece of paper with things written down. 
Here we go. Yeah, Monday the 4th at the Dumfries Day Center from 11 to 12 is the next, next one. That's um, tomorrow. So if you want to be involved in that and you want to see Tracy, where's your, I saw Tracy there. So if you want to be involved in visiting some old folks, bringing the love of Jesus Christ, speak to Tracy and she'll tell you more about that as well. And we've also got the pantry open every single day of the week. Our pantry is our food outreach program. It helps us get rid of food waste. This is stuff, most of it's there. The supermarket should be just chucking out and it would go to waste. So if you're interested in, in food waste or if you just need some food, it doesn't matter whether you have a you're in desperate need or you just want to be, help reduce food waste, everyone is welcome. And we much, much prefer if as many people come as possible so that we don't have to throw anything else out and waste it. So everyone is plenty welcome. That's every night from 7 until 8. Um, Morag wants to invite anyone who's involved into education. Um, you could be a teacher. You could be a student. You could be a parent. You could be administrative staff. Whatever your connection is to education, we have a prayer meeting. Even people who are just interested in praying for education can come as well. But that's going to be on Tuesday the 5th. Uh, 4.30 at King's. So that's 4.30 at King's and be up in the upstairs bit, won't it? So there's, if you go up the stairs at King's, past the toilets to the very end, they'll be praying in the room up there, the upper room. And um, so everyone's welcome. Uh, the next Sisterhood event is going to be on Saturday at 7. It's a nighttime one. So uh, if you want to know more about Sisterhood, you can see my, my Helen or more. I can tell you a bit more about what's happening. But I hear good things. I don't think I've ever been to one since I'm not a sister. But I hear good things, so if you're a lady, uh, or even a young lady, you could be a teenage lady as well, you're welcome to come along and just learn about the things of God, very specifically for, for you guys. And let's see if there's anything else. Holy Week services. So um, there's a lot, it's very, very busy. I think we have a slide, I don't know if you can see all the dates, but we should have a slide for the, uh, the Holy Week services. Um, we've got the Good Friday service in St. Mary's Church Hall here at 7.30, but before that, on the, the Good Friday, we have the um, Walk of Witness. So if you're available, if you're not in school or you're working, you can meet at 10.30 from Chukwir Church just over the river. And uh, where are we at? Over the river that way? <laughs> where are we at? Somewhere. Chukwir, anyway. And, um, and you walk into the town and just, just declaring the, the love of Jesus to the town. And then, of course, on the Easter day, um, we uh, we're at the sunrise service on 8 a.m. at the Mill Green. So that's on the opposite side of the White Sands over there. And it's great because so many different churches come. I can't remember how many people were there last time, Pastor Mark, but it was well over 100 people, I would say, from various churches. Uh, it's a great opportunity just to remember Jesus together with our fellow brothers and sisters here in Dumfries. And of course, Easter Day service here in the church. It's a great opportunity to invite people to church, to hear the message of the cross, of uh, Jesus' love for us, his, his death and his resurrection that gives us life and hope. Amen. So, you know, why not use it as an opportunity? Hey, what are you doing this Easter? Why don't you come to church with us and uh, invite people along? And, um, you know, so de definitely go for that. Right. And then, oh, yes, very important, especially for all those who have mothers. So next Sunday is Mother's Day or Mothering Sunday. So um, just, you know, think of something special for your mom. Maybe get her a card, some flowers or whatever. Invite her along to church if she doesn't go to church. This is a great opportunity and uh, we'll be doing something special for the moms, I'm sure, that week. Okay. Brilliant. Are you guys ready to get into the Word of God? Yes, well, we've got our very own Helen Smith, all the way coming, all the way from Musselt, <laughs> going to share the Word for us this morning. So let's just welcome Helen. Well, good morning. I want us to just take some quiet for a moment. Do you ever feel as if you've just bundled into something and it's sort of, you've landed there and it's like, ah, what's going on? And sometimes it's like that when we come to church. It's like we hurry out the house. If you've got kids, it's, I remember, it's quite a hassle trying to get them organized to get out. Or even if you haven't got kids, it's quite a, a rush to get here, to get parked, to walk, to find a seat, to say hello. And sometimes we just land on our seat and it's like, where are you, God? 
Do you know what it feels like? So let's just stay still in his presence for a minute. And this is a good time to refocus. I don't know if you have sat navs in your car. Most people have them or on their phone. And when we go on a journey, sometimes Mark's very keen to see the big picture and he spins it out to see the whole journey. And then you forget where you have to turn left or turn right. But there's a little button that says recenter. And you press it and it goes, Meow. and it comes back to where you are. I just feel as if we need to do that this morning is just press the recenter button and let us get to just where we are in God's presence. So let's just be still for a minute and then I'll pray. Lord, sometimes we're so uncomfortable with quiet, stillness, silence. We concentrate on bits of things that are buzzing around our heads. But this morning, Lord, we want to just come and focus our gaze upon Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for coming down from that wonderful place that you have in heaven and being one of us, to know what it feels like to be human, to be in a world full of troubles and full of pain, full of questions and full of awkward people that we don't get on with very easily. <laughs> Lord, I thank you that you know all about that. And Lord, I just pray this morning as we recenter ourselves and just calm ourselves in your presence, that you would soften our hearts, still our minds, that we can hear you this morning, that we can find a way back to you, that we know who you are this morning. I pray that you would do a mighty work in our hearts, in our church, in our community, that Lord, our own ways of thinking. We just lay them down at your feet, knowing that you are God. Your ways are higher than ours. You know the beginning and the end and everything in between. You're able to take the needs of one person, see the aches and the pains in their heart and their lives yet order the universe at the same time. Father, we stand in awe of you this morning and admit that actually we really don't know very much. We like to think we do. We like to think that we're knowledgeable and in control. But Lord, we just lay that down as well and ask you, Holy Spirit, to work in our hearts to recenter them towards our master, our creator, our redeemer. And we bless you that we can be here this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I've got three parables, three characters, three spectators, and our response. That's what we're looking at this morning. And uh, we've, be, we've been in a series of looking at pursuing God 
running after him, finding out who he is, chasing him and, and getting to know him so that we are passionate about him. And uh, Davi mentioned something just in passing the other week when he was speaking about how the fact that actually God chases after us as well. And Psalm 23 says, says this, it says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I, I sometimes have a picture of that, that God in his goodness and his mercy is after us. And sometimes we've just got to stop, turn around, and see all that goodness and mercy. Sometimes I think we can get so caught up with pursuing God, reading a Bible, praying, doing the Christian thing. And, and it's right to seek God. Don't get me wrong on this. It's, it's totally needful. We need to seek God. But I sometimes think it's so easy to get caught up with the method and the call that I'm pursuing God, I'm chasing after him. And, and it gets exhausting and we're weary and we're trying that hard to catch up with God, to hear his voice, to know what he's saying. And so-and-so seems to be much further ahead on the journey than I am. And <sighs> my race seems like the snail's pace. I don't seem to grow very fast. All these things. And we end up a bit of a wrecked heap and there's no revival in us. Or we come on the other extreme and become so self-righteous that we're trying to do it in our own way and our own strength, and I'm just right with God, praise the Lord. Now, obviously, I'm not saying to stop pursuing God. That's not what I'm saying. Because this needs to be part of our daily life. As followers, disciples of Jesus, we need to be reading the Word daily. We need to be in fellowship with Him and hearing His voice and that. But it's, it's the stressing over it that I think I want to take out of the equation today. And I want to talk about the role Jesus has in him pursuing us. It's so much bigger, so much more than our pursuit of him, always will be. And there comes, I believe, a, a rest and a, a trust knowing that he is after us. He's, he's on our case. And with that in mind, I want us to look at Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read the whole chapter. Very familiar passage. I'm sure most of you will have heard these parables before. But I'm reading from Luke chapter 15 from the New International Version. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep till he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. And he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who don't need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully till she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had and set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. 
He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? I'll set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. And so he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother's come, he replied, and your father's killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered the father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. They're great parables, these, aren't they? Great stories of finding that which was lost. They're sort of stories of lostness, <laughs> if there's such a word. I find it quite interesting when you look at who God was speaking to, what Jesus was speaking to. It says at the beginning, it was the tax collectors and sinners. They're, they're the bad people. And the Pharisees and teachers of the law, they're supposed to be the good people, just to, to make it like that. But actually, they, the people that Jesus was speaking to were the people who knew they had need of a savior and the people who thought they had it all together. Those that needed to be found and those that thought they were found. And it's very interesting who Jesus speaks to when he comes to bring these messages so we've got these three stories, a sheep, a coin, and a young man. Luke 19 verse 10 says, the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. That was the mission of Jesus, was to get back what had been lost. Get back that relationship with God that was lost in the Garden of Eden. Let's look at these uh, passages and see what, see what we can learn from them. First one is about the sheep. And Jesus is just concerned about that one. He knows he has another 99. You think, well, he's got 99, one. But no, he's concerned about the one. Now here, we're in a group of people. And it's easy to think I'm just among the 99. But you know, Jesus knows you, and he's concerned about you. Not just the group of people here. He's interested in your life. That tells us an awful lot about the love and the determination of the shepherd to have us back in the fold. He goes off searching for the lost sheep. It's a lovely picture of him reaching down and getting this daft sheep that's wandered off. Now, 
I think in some of these stories that Jesus tells us, we can really use our holy imagination to try and picture it and see what, what it's like. And like many accounts in the Bible, we don't get a, a time frame. We don't, you know, when, the, when we read it in the verses, sometimes between the verses, there's hundreds of years have passed. Sometimes it's just minutes, sometimes it's weeks. So we don't know how long this sheep was lost. I don't suppose it would be very long, because I don't think it would live very long if it wasn't being cared for. But we don't know whether the shepherd took an hour or repeated days to find his sheep. But we do know he went after it. He went to seek it and find it. And he, he didn't just get there and say, come on, you daft thing, come on home. He picked it up, put it on his shoulders, and looked after it. And again, what sort of sheep was this? Was it one of these sort of dreamy sheep? A, an otherworldly type of sheep that just sort of was fascinated by the clouds. And when all the rest of the flock was following after the shepherd, it was like, did it just dream itself away from the flock? Or was it a rebel? I'm not going with that lot. I'm sick of them. <laughs> My mom and dad are there. I'm not doing what they do. And that self-righteous brother? <laughs> No, not having ended that. Maybe it went off deliberately. I think I'll just go down this path. It looks far better than this grubby old field that we're supposed to be in. We, maybe one of the other sheep bleated in its ear something offensive. So he detached himself from the flock for personal reasons. We've no idea why this sheep strayed. We just know that once it was part of the flock and it got lost. What about the coin? This is a, a different one because this is in a culture that we're not familiar with really. The, these coins that they were talking about wasn't just something that fell out your purse. These coins were special things that married women wore around their head and there was usually 10 of them and they were given when they got married um, through friends relatives and they would be very meaningful to the woman very valuable and emotionally and sentimentally valuable as well and I think to lose one then the woman would feel that loss quite badly and she obviously went to great lengths to find that coin. Uh, it, our son Peter has lost his watch. If anybody has found a watch, it might be his. But he's really quite distressed about it because he, he bought this watch and it's a really nice one. And he's pulled the settee out, he's done this, he's done that. And now he's harnessed his mom and dad to sort of say, can you help find this lost watch? But it's valuable to him, and it means a lot to him, so he's searching for it. And this coin was valuable to the woman, just like you are valuable to God. And look what happens when she's scoured the room. I think we've got a picture of her looking under the dresser poking things out to try and get it, going to no end of bother to find this coin. And she finds it. And she is so happy about it, she calls her friends and neighbors. Now, if we found that, it would be like, yay, we found it, and just get on with life. But not so. She calls a party. It's that valuable to her. The shepherd called his friends and neighbors, and they had a party because it was worth celebrating. And Jesus compares the reaction of the shepherd and the, the lady with the coin to how God reacts when one lost person comes back 
to the Savior when they repent of their sin, believes in Jesus, and gives their lives to him. He says there's more rejoicing in heaven over the one. It's amazing. Now, as far as I'm aware, because this is not Disney, the coin didn't make a choice to get lost. It didn't make a choice to roll under the dresser and hide behind the, the, the leg of the, the dresser where it couldn't be seen. Maybe it just got bumped and bashed by the routines of daily life and it fell off and wasn't noticed that it, it had just gone for a few days. And then it was missed, then it was noticed, and it was panic, let's get this back. But it too was lost. And then the third one, of course, we know this story so well, the sun. Now this is a different one altogether. This one wasn't some dreamy sheep that wandered off looking for the sky or a coin that rolled away. This one deliberately made a choice to leave. Ouch. He was the youngest son in his father's household, and he chose to go. We don't know why. Maybe he was lured by the glamour of city life. University looks a great call out there. Maybe there were arguments at home and he'd had enough of his parents. Maybe he got to the point where he just, you just don't understand me. And off he went. I'm leaving. And he was very deliberate about it. Asked for his inheritance. Got his money sorted. And it says, a short time later, off he went. Maybe the, they didn't agree on the political issues of the day. Oh, that's a bummer, isn't it? Maybe they were disagreeing in the household about the current philosophies of the day. We don't know what it was, but he chose to go away. And he messed it up. He probably thought when he got out there that he was fine, he had plenty of money, he had friends who of course abandoned him when the money ran out. And of course he had his pride. He couldn't, couldn't admit that he might have been wrong. That's a tough one, isn't it? None of us like to do that. But the son is the only one that had the choice in, of these three stories. And he had to, it says, come to his senses. He had to take a long, hard look at himself. Can you imagine what it was like, him sitting there, feeding the pigs, in rags, stinking of pig. He had to look at himself and eat humble pie and then do the return trip. That's not an easy one. But you know what comes over here is the care and the diligence of the one looking for the lost. What amazing love. I love this picture that we've got of the father looking for the son returning, standing on the porch, watching and waiting. And of course we can use our imagination and I don't suppose this father was just sitting there sadly thinking he's gone. Never see him again. Not at all. This father was one watching. He's coming home. He'll be back. I'm watching this. Every day on the porch, looking out. Can I see him? God isn't standing, sadly waiting for you to return to him. He knows the way that you take. The Bible tells us that he's there with us, even when we don't recognize him. And he, he was with this prodigal son in the pigsty, in the parties, in the mess-ups, in the drunken state, in the confusion of his mind. God was right there. It's just the son hadn't recognized that. God is always working his purposes out. 
Our God knows the way that we take. And he's standing there in anticipation. Every day, a day closer. And then he sees him in the distance. And he doesn't just stand there and go, right, he's for it. Told him he should have not done it. Told him this. Not at all. That's not what our father's like. He's like this. He's coming! Yay! He sees him in the distance and he runs towards him. What love can that be? Knowing all that he's done, all that he's wasted, all the places he's been, all the rubbish that he's spoken, all the messed up things that he's got into and is still probably in his head. And he runs to meet him and welcome him. says he runs and kisses him. Now the mothers are involved in this too, I'm sure. We just hear the story of the father. But I as a mother know fine well I'm on my porch. I'm watching, I'm waiting for five of mine. Along with Mark, we're watching, we're waiting, and today is a day closer than it was yesterday. And you might be the same, watching, waiting for your loved ones. Or maybe you're the lost one. Parents, I don't think, are that daft. They know kids are going to have their own moments. They would know that the younger son wanted off to see the world, find himself, sick of tradition, old ways, wanting to get involved in this new thinking. And oh, the heartache at letting go. Because just imagine this father sorting out his finances would know fine well that he was giving him the means to get lost. That's hard. And for all we know, they might not have been in touch all those years. There was no social media then. And it was a long wait for this, a bit unlike the sheep and the coin, which could have had a short space of lostness about it. This seems to have gone on for years. The older brother gives us a hint. He says, all these years I've served you. And the father had been waiting for a long time, watching, looking. And I wonder too whether this father would send out messengers every now and then to see if he could get a just go and see where he's in. It may be in that city. If you hear anything about him, let me know. This is the natural father. Our heavenly father knows the pits that we're in. He knows the quagmires that we've got ourselves into and the messes that we've made and tried to get out of and just got entangled in the weeds a bit more. But you know, these, this father was filled with hope. And for those of us that are waiting for the loss to come back, don't lose hope. Feed yourself for the word of God, the promises of God, because that way hope comes from. And I love when the father saw the son, how he embraced him. Did we have that picture? There, he's home, stinking of pig's will. Raggy, messed up, probably in, in his own head space. But he'd come home. And you know, the father didn't just sort of say, oh, now, oh gosh, we, we better fit a shower room for this stinky thing. We'd, Oh, where did we put this? His clothes, he's been gone so long, I don't know where we've put these things. Not at all. He had the calf already fattened. Now, if it was years, they'd probably fattened up a few calves. 
and use them and another. But there was always one at the ready. The robes were ready. The authority, the signature ring that he put on that he could stamp and say, I am my father's son, were ready. God is ready for you. He's watched for you. He's run after you. He's chasing after you. And he's ready the minute you come home to throw the party. Because they had a party. And it was so loud that the older son heard it in the fields. What they're doing? So we've looked at the, the characters in here, the, the ones that got lost. The sheep, the coin, and the boy. And we've looked at the ones that were looking, the shepherd, the woman, and the father. And the third set of people that are there are the onlookers, I've called them. That's the rest of the flock, the woman's neighbors and family, and the older brother and the farmhands, and what their response was. <laughs> well, the sheep, being sheep, probably absorbed the lost sheep back into the flock again. But then we don't know, there might have been a bit of headbutting and ignoring the lost sheep. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> bit of a supercilious attitude that said, I'm not like that. I hope not. I hope our flock's not like that. But the shepherd's friends, wow, they had a party. And the neighbors, they were so pleased for the woman. She probably had to dust off the coin, get the polish out and shine it up again because it had probably got a bit tarnished. And the sheep might have had a few cuts and bruises. Broken leg, maybe. We don't know. But they would tend it and look after it and return it to the flock. Interestingly, though, the shepherd's friends, the, the lady's friends, wouldn't find that coin or the sheep as valuable as the one who owned it. But they rejoiced, they got there, and they celebrated the return. And then we have the older brother. <laughs> he wasn't a very happy chap, was he? He was resentful. But you know, he was another one that was very lost. He was distanced from his father. You know, if he's the oldest son, he would have been learning the ropes of the business. He should have been alongside his father, right there, learning how to trade, how to care, how to manage the business. But no, he was out in the fields, being a slave to my father. Resentful that he'd had to slave over this. They had farm hands and servants, it tells us in the story. Interestingly enough, in all three accounts, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and both sons were lost within the family. They were lost within the house. They were lost within the field. They weren't necessarily a way out there. Now the prodigal was, but the older brother wasn't. He was still in the father's house. Do you know that you can still be lost and still part of the house? It's really easy to hide under the dresser round the corner and not be noticed. And you're just as lost as the prodigal. The older brother was just as lost and as far from the father as his younger brother. 
he just hadn't gone. But his heart was resentful and not engaged with the father's business. And so now we've looked at the three things, the, the characters, the, find, the seekers, and the onlookers. And we'll come to this last one, our response. How are we? Where do we fit in all this? How do we respond? We can be the lost one. We can be the lost sheep. We can be the lost coin or one of the lost brothers. Where are you? And as an onlooker, where are we going to be responding to those that are coming? The ones that are lost? Are we going to have a snooty, sheepy attitude of self-righteousness that looks down our nose at those that come smelling of pigs? As if we hadn't messed up. Are we going to resent the prodigal when he's reinstated? What's our response going to be? Because our job is to keep watching, to keep praying, to build our hope, to have the robes ready, to have the signature ring ready, to have the fatted calf ready. Yeah, they may need restoration, showers and counseling maybe, maybe talking through what went on and the whys, but our hearts need to be ready to say, welcome home, and help them readjust. You know, when the prodigals come home, they're going to remember what they'd left behind. They're going to remember home. They'll pick up and work. And it won't be back to square one. You've got to learn all the basics again. No. God is going to restore the years that the locusts stole from them. He'll have them back in, up and running. They'll have a genuine repentance. It's not something that's out to impress the people, but it's a hard right before God, which is the only thing that matters. I've sinned against God. Let me just be here to serve. I don't want any recognition. I just want to be right with God. And you know, sadly, I hope we're not like this, but not everybody will like that the home and taking their place again. I've been here longer than he has. He's been here five minutes and they're giving him responsibility. That's just not fair. Oh, well, things don't look fair in God's kingdom. God knows what he's doing. And he restores and rebuilds and reinstigates the call that he once called you with. It's never gone away. God's call on your life is without repentance. And he loves you. And he's watching on the porch this morning. And so I need to ask you this morning, who are you? Where are you? And what is your response to God who is pursuing you? Are you lost? Even if you're part of the family of God, in the household as it were, you can still be lost. It's just easy to hide and not step up and take your place in the father's household. Just be out in the fields, suffering, not being noticed, feeling overlooked, instead of stepping into what the father's made available for you, his authority, his resources, building the kingdom with him. Are you a prodigal? Lost? And far away, there's time to hear the Father's voice. 
saying as he did to Adam and Eve in the garden, Adam, where are you? Not that God doesn't know you, but you need to recognize where you're at. But know this, whether you're in the house or out the house, the Father has never stopped watching out for you. And he's waiting on the porch for your return. It's not just a hug you're going to get either. He's got that reinstatement to the authority of God. The household resources, the mercy, the grace, the peace, the forgiveness. The gifts and the calling. You know what you have to do? Come to your senses. Step back in. Both these brothers hadn't really grasped the love and the grace of their father. The younger one thought he was going to be for it when he got home. Was ready just to be stuck in the fields. And the older brother hadn't understood the grace of the father anyway. That said, everything I have is yours. It's all been here. It's like I'm just waiting to be blessed by God. Well, step into the blessing of God. Step into what he's already made available for you. The older brother, for all he lived in the father's household, he hadn't understood the grace either. So how do we do this? Well, just like I mentioned about Adam and Eve, we've got to acknowledge where we are. I'm hiding behind a fig leaf. We've got to recognize our need of God wherever we're coming from. So recognize your lostness. Turn around. Come to your senses. And take the step of returning home. And then when you get there, Allow the grace and the mercy of God to wash over you, forgive you, restore you, and step into the new robes, the authority, and the call of God on your life. That's what your brothers and sisters are here to help you do. Relearn, take your place, and live in the forgiveness that God is just waiting to pour out upon you. nothing more to say just where are you and what are you going to do about it come home you are so loved shall we pray father sometimes when I hear your word and your truth it is so squirmy and makes me feel so uncomfortable but I know you're right and so this morning I just want to acknowledge that I've been one of those lost ones you see me you know where I am whether I'm behind a fig leaf under the cupboard in a faraway place or stuck in a quagmire or down a cliff Lord, I ask you, give me your courage to come home. Humble me so that I can repent and be your son and daughter once again. Let me take my place in the household of faith and build the kingdom with you. I pray that you would receive me fully this morning as I know you will, because Lord, I come and surrender everything I am to you I admit I don't know it all and I admit I probably never will but I choose this day to come home and trust you in Jesus name Amen Amen, thank you Helen let's just bless her with a 
Round of appreciation. So there's a, a call to respond there, you know, and you may have identified already where you're at in that list of characters. Um, but don't leave this place without making a decision to follow Jesus. If you've never done that before, Pastor Helen, Pastor Mark, Morag and I, Debbie, Joanna, one of the host teams, would love to just talk to you about Jesus, what it means to be a Christian. And uh, we'd love to welcome you into that family, into the flock, into the pile of coins. <laughs> or maybe, maybe you are like the prodigal and you've been away from God and you, you, you know God's calling you back today. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to talk to you about Jesus and what it means to come back to him. Amen. We're just going to finish our worship service with a song called Graves into Gardens. And it's about how God can change the graves of our life into fruitful, bountiful, blessing places. And uh, so, you know, wherever you're at, no matter what you're going through, God wants you to bring you into the fullness of all that he has for you. Amen. Let's just stand.
everybody said? Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. If you're new, we'd love to meet you.